Let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. Here we have x times y double prime minus 3y prime, and this is equal to 2. Notice that because we have the second derivative here, this is an example of a second order differential equation. And also, because the second derivative is to the first power, likewise, the first derivative is also to the first power, this is still linear. So altogether, this is the second order linear differential equation. And yes, I haven't shown you guys how to solve things like this, but we can look at this and do some substitution, and we'll be able to change this into a first order linear differential equation. Because we see that we have here y prime, and this is y double prime. As long as I do some substitution, and let me just call this to be phi, because I want to take phi and be y prime, like this. Let me take phi equals to the first derivative of y. When I do this, you see that y double prime is nothing but just phi prime, isn't it? Because if I differentiate phi, I just have to differentiate this. And of course, that will become y double prime. And now you will take this ingredients, and you will be able to take this equation and make it into a first order linear differential equation. We will get x in the front. This is phi prime. And then we have the minus 3. And then y prime is original phi. So let me just put this down. And then this is equal to 2. See? Right here, I told you this is now a first order linear differential equation with the phi and phi prime right here, isn't it? Okay, so let's do it the usual way. Solve for phi first, at the end, we'll try to solve for y. So I'm going to divide everything by x, and also let me just write this as d phi dx, and I will divide this by x, so we have negative 3 over x times phi, and this is equal to 2 over x, right? Okay. Integrating factor, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to use mu, which is equal to e to the integral power, negative 3 over x dx. And this is going to be e, and now let me put down negative 3 first. And the integral of 1 over x, which is just ln absolute value of x, right? And you know the deal. Take this and make that into a power, so now you have negative 3, so that you can cancel the e and the, the ln. This right here. It's going to be, yes, technically the absolute value of x to the negative 3. But I would just say let's use mu to be positive version of 1 over x to the third power. Because once again, when you have the absolute value, all in all, you just care about plus minus. right? That's a change that we have to make. But uh, I'm just going to use the positive version of x to the negative 3. If you want to use the negative version, well, when you multiply everything by negative 1 over x to the third power, actually just divide everything by negative. So it's the same as multiplying by positive. So the deal is that you don't have to worry about the absolute value, just care about the function part. This is all we need. Don't worry about the plus, minus, things like that. We just need to have 1 to help us out. All right. So let me come back right here. I will multiply everything by the integrating factor, which is 1 over x to the third power. And from here, let's see what do we end up with. For the first term, of course, it's just 1 over x to the third power dv dx. And this times that, it's going to be minus 3 over x to the fourth power phi. And for the last one, we have 2 over this times that, which is x to the fourth power. All right, on the left-hand side, this is always going to be the derivative of a product of two functions, and it will always be the mu times the phi, right? So you know the deal, so let me just write it down. 1 over x to the third power times phi, all right? And on the right-hand side, I still have this, 2 over x to the fourth power. And now I want to get rid of the derivative. So to do so, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. So put on the x like that. This and that will cancel, and you see on the left-hand side, we have 1 over x to the third power v, and this is going to be, uh, I'm going to just look at this as 2 over x to the fourth power s, let me just write it down, as 2 times x to the negative 4. And I will have to add a 1 to this power, which is negative 3, and divide it by the power, right? So we have negative 2 over 3. 
and this is the new exponent. I will just bring this down to a denominator for you guys. So we have x to the third power, like that. And here we have to, don't forget to add a constant c. So this is what we have. Technically, at the moment, let me just put down c1. You'll see why. Alright, I'm going to multiply everything by x to the third power so that I can get rid of this right here, right? So I can isolate v, which is going to be this times that. It's nothing but just negative 2 over 3. And this times that, which is plus c1 times x to the third power. And seriously, this is what we have, isn't it? Right? Alright, we got phi, but we don't care about phi, we care about y. Phi is the same as y prime, so let's do the substitution back. y prime is equal to this, negative 2 over 3, plus c1x to the third power, like that. Well, this is y prime. How can I get a y by itself? Well, that's the first derivative. So all I'm going to do is, let's just integrate both sides. And we're doing this with respect to x. So let me put on dx like that. So at the end, you will see, let me just put this down right here. We will have on the left hand side, that's the y, and this is equal to integral of negative 2 over 3 is just going to give us negative 2 over 3x. And here, we have to integrate this, right? So add 1 to the power, which becomes 4, divide by 4. So be sure you write down plus c1 over 4 times x to the fourth power, just like this for now. And we also have to add another constant. You see, we are integrating both sides. We have to add another constant, so this is c2. So, the idea is that because we start off with a second order differential equation, at the end, the solution, you should have two constants. Right now, we have c1 and c2, and this is what I have, isn't it? But c1 is a constant, 4 is a constant, c1 divided by 4 is still a constant. So if you would like, you can just call the whole thing to be the rest c1, if you would like. We can relabel that as c3. But anyways, y equals to this is negative 2 over 3x plus, let me just write it down in red so you can see it's the new c1. And this is the final answer pretty much. Times x to the fourth power, at the end we add a c2 to it, and this right here, is it.